how do you get math done with so many kids? There's only so many hours in the day. And if you're not going to outsource it or have a computer program or do independent math, how do you get it done? Today, I want to talk to you about how I personally get math done with my five school age children. Hello and welcome back to Wholehearted Homemaking. My name is Heather. I am mama to seven, will be eight in March, and I am homeschooling five of my kids right now. The youngest two are four and two, though they don't officially have school yet. Um, and one of the questions I get asked a lot is how do I make time for math? So I thought I'd walk through a real quick video on how I make math work because we do not outsource it. We do not use computer-based math learning except for some review practice and it is not independent work. We had done, my oldest actually does mostly independent because she's capable of that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that has worked well for her. And my other kids, it has not. I probably could with the younger kids do an independent program, but I have found a Charlotte Mason method of math that really works. And so we're just gonna stick with that. So I've shared in other videos our love of Charlotte Mason. Let me make sure it's a long title. Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic by Rochelle Barberina. Barberna? I'm sorry, Rochelle, I always say it wrong. One of these days, I'll remember it. But um, in that video, I also share that my third born had switched over to Rod and Staff because we were having some relational issues. We have since moved her back into the CMEA math program, and it has worked very well. She just needed some some independent time for the two of us to repair some <clears throat> math relationship issues that were coming. And so we are doing that. So let me hop in and first tell you what I'm using. So with my year one, who is six, we are in book one of the series. For my sixth grader, she is in book three. It's where she is. We're, we're not worried about where she should be, what grade level. We're worried about what she can do. And so she is in book three. My um, fourth grader, however, is actually passed her in book three and close to finishing that. And my seventh grader just finished book four and is going into fifth grade, the book five one, not fifth grade, but book five, which also has some geometry components to it. And we structure our math week so that they have four days of math with mama, and then they have one day of business math. Um, let me touch on the business math because it's a little bit easier to understand. So for my older two, their business math is from Simply Charlotte Mason as well, and it is their... I think it's your business math or something is what it's called. And one is a pet store and one's a bookstore. I think they also have maybe a sports shop one. My girls do that pretty much independently, but they're pretending to run a shop. They have to order inventory. They have to um, write checks. They have to pay bills, all of these things. And then it's like you have 12 months of owning your store and then towards the end. So this is a carryover from last year. They really love it. My seventh grader especially loves it. For whatever reason, once you make it money, math just makes sense to her. And so that has been a highlight for her. My oldest, she knows how to do it. But they have to figure percentages and everything. I mean, it's very involved and they do can do it quickly, but um, also teaches them a lot of concepts. My little kids, I can't find it. Now my six-year-old does not do business math. But my fourth and sixth grader, I have something called Market Math, and it's just one of those cheap teacher books you can get on Amazon or a teacher store. And um, it's, you pretend you're shopping at the store and have to figure out different things. And it's a little workbook, I copy the pages, and they do that once a week. They enjoy that because it is dealing with money. Then the other days, we structure it as Rochelle points out in her math books. And so in general, now granted, it, you have longer lessons as you get older. But in general, I stick to 15 minute lessons with five minutes of review. However, I'm not in charge of the five minute review. So I believe, I don't remember now. You're either supposed to have the five minute review at the beginning or the end. <laughs> I don't remember what she recommends. Um, whatever she recommends, I think I'm doing it the wrong way. Um, technically speaking, yes. So 20 minutes with five minutes set aside for time of re lightly review with mental math. Um, we typically kind of put our five minute review wherever it falls in the day. It doesn't necessarily come before or after, or even in the same hour. Um, we do our review part in a couple different ways, but let me go through. So we'll do 15 minutes of a lesson using this book. And I almost never just hand the book to my child. There are rare occasions where I'm nursing the baby, changing a diaper or whatever, where I need to give them the book and they finish it, but that doesn't happen usually. So what we would do is we would simply go through the questions and I read them orally to my children. 
and then they can use manipulatives during some, or they'll write them, or they'll do them mentally, depending on what it asks for. This is what I did, the lesson I did with my six-year-old today. And we don't always get through a whole lesson in that 15 minutes. It just depends. So today, my six-year-old got through a lesson and a half. Um, hers are rather easy, and if she's focused, she can get quite a bit done. My older kids are lucky to do a lesson in 15 minutes. Um, sometimes it takes them a little longer than that, and so we'll do two. My sixth grader is really struggling, and it will take us three or four lessons to get through one lesson in the book. And that's okay, because we're working towards mastery and complete understanding and confidence in math. We are not looking to finish the book at a specific time, so that would be nice, but <laughs> I'd let go of that realm. And so I'll do 15 minutes of math, and then they have their review. So we have two different kinds of ways that we do review. For my older kids, they generally do extra math twice a week. So extra math is a program you can get on your tablet. I believe you have to pay for the app on your phone or tablet. It's free online. So we do it on the computer and you can do it free online and it goes through a um, math facts and builds. My seventh grader had passed all of them. She doesn't do that anymore. Um, but they have all of those there for you and it will give you a report and everything and I can put all my kids on one thing. So I log in and they do it. Now my, like I said, they only do that twice a week. So the other two days for review, I will often grab um, something like these cards, which come with the Charlotte Mason elementary arithmetic series, if you buy the bundle. And I'll have them, like today I had my daughter, I put all these cards out and I said, okay, pick two. This is for my six-year-old. And she picked two. And then while I was getting lunch ready, she went and filled those out in her notebook. She could do them out loud orally too. She really gets a high from writing it in her notebook. So who am I to argue with her? So she was and wrote those in her notebook. And then I check them and we go over which ones are wrong. Talked about like there was a 12 that she wrote 21 um, and just how it's important. And then we'll do the same with the older kids until they've mastered their math facts. My seventh grader, I will usually give her a mixed review or an extra review problem from the back because, um, which I don't know, does this one I even have review in the back? Some of the books have, and maybe it's not this one, maybe it's in the back of four. They have um, extra questions you can give your kids and so I'll give her those to use for review. In an ideal world and in previous years, I've done those out loud. I don't have time for that now, so the review they do independently and that's how it works out. I reserve one hour for that, <laughs> which, doesn't feel like a lot until you're in it. <laughs> it's exhausting and it's not for everyone. I am a trained elementary school teacher, so this is not that bad, but <laughs> it's just, it's a lot sometimes. Um, like the day that I introduced fractions to one kid and long division to another and decimals to another. That was, that was a bit much that day. Um, but what I do is I say, Okay, we're going to start math at X amount of time. This term, we're doing it from 10 to 11. And that's working out this week <laughs> so far. Um, but I've always just said an hour. And it worked really well when I had only three students because I could give them 20 minutes each. And I just have their stuff all ready to go at the table and just call them and be like, okay, you're, if I give them a five-minute warning, you're coming up next. Um, I can't always do that. And so and now that I have this many, I can't give an hour and a half to math in my day. I just don't have the time frame for it. But I will give um, 15 minutes and then have them set up to go do the review. And if I need to push that time a little bit, like today we, we did a closer to 20 minutes for a couple of my older ones, and I'm okay with that. I try to balance it out, but not overwhelm our day because nobody wants to be doing math forever. <laughs> not even mom. And so that's what we've been working on. Um, and so that's kind of how it looks, is I have this one hour, five minutes before we start, I tell my six-year-old, okay, you're gonna have math in five minutes, make sure you have what you need, get your notebook and your pen, or if I don't have the manipulatives that she's using today, I'll have her grab those. And then we start, and I set a timer, and I have one that has like a silly rooster sound, it's kind of fun, um, that way they know, okay, it's not going to last forever. And I set that timer. Um, I don't always need it now, but it was very helpful in those first few years of trying to do this kind of math. So that way everybody knew this does have an ending. It won't go on forever. Um, and so she'll have that while she's working about five minutes before she's done. I'll remind the next child, Hey, get your notebook and your pencil. Your math starts in five minutes. 
they'll come sit down um, and so on and so on and that has worked really well and then in the last minute or two I'll have them finish up whatever problem they're on and they'll say okay here's your you know for my six-year-old today choose your cards and then you go write those in your notebook for, and then come show me your notebook for my year six who is early and just starting long division so about halfway through the book um, I have her she's been doing money because that's whoops that's what the long division is in this particular book is with money so I'll have her um, stop about a minute before because I want her to clean up not be too overwhelmed um, and then say okay now let's go do your review problems or your extra math depending on the day and this problem this book does have extra problems at the back that I can give her as well as these because she's really working on memorizing those facts still and then um, she goes and does that if I have time I'll have her do it orally maybe while I'm making dinner or something but um, my kids really like writing it in their notebooks for some reason so that's what I let them do um, not every kid likes writing down their math problems my fourth grader who is further along in this book um, today yesterday we did um, what did we do yesterday Oh, we started doing fractions and we did some mixed review and we realized, oh no, we've forgotten some of our uh, adi multiplication division problems. So I had her write out her times tables again as a review today. Um, just because we've had a break, we were kind of in fraction world for about a week and then we had a break. So we just needed a refresher of those math tables and so she wrote them down. It took her 15 minutes. She did, uh, I think, three through 10 math tables. Um, so some kind of review. And then my sixth grader, seventh grader, um, she did the second to last lesson in here and so she had to we did the lesson it took less than 15 minutes to do the lesson um, but I also had her writing down some of her charts because um, you get into measurements at the end and so she has a little notebook that she keeps all her measurement um, equivalences in and charts so that she has those for reference and then she had um, because she doesn't do extra math or anything like that she had some extra review time of working on um, some problems yeah, I thought there were more. So there is some more at the back too. And that's how we make that happen. Now you're thinking, you only mentioned four. Yeah, I have, my oldest does that basically on her own. She is doing um, pre-algebra through this name of the book. This was recommended by Memorial Press. Um, and I like it because she's, it has the lesson in here. Like there's no teacher manual. <laughs> like you would just teach what's in the book. Um, and so she's able to read it for the most part. And then when she has a question, um, she comes and asks me. I try to write notes of what she needs to do um, as she goes through it and then has several examples and so I'll have her do the example questions and write them out. Um, and she can always come and ask me how to do something if she doesn't understand it. I think maybe one out of ten lessons she comes to ask, maybe more not and not much more um, to ask how to do it. She's just an independent learner. She, she can do that herself. Um, that's that unique child. My next child coming up won't be able to do that independently. So I'll have to think of something else and I'll probably be doing math two hours a day, but that's okay. Um, but for right now, she can do most of that independent. And so after I finish math with all of her other sisters, she can come ask me a question or a lot of times it'll be in the afternoon. She can come and ask me questions about it and we'll go through it. Um, but that's how I make math work with five kids and not make it too overwhelming. In two years, when I add another student, and my oldest will be in like algebra two geometry. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, but for now, it's working really well. And you can watch my other videos to find out how much I love the Charlotte Mason arithmetic series because I really do. And I give a walkthrough through, through some of these. Um, we're we're going to start book five on Monday. And then um, maybe next semester, I can share a little update on how we're liking it because I know we'll love it. Um, but um, this has been a good program for us. It's a Charlotte Mason approach. It is very teacher intensive. You can't just hand it off. But I like it because I know where they're at. I am very confident in what they're able and not able to do. And I can approach that and fix when I need to. Like my sixth grader who was struggling and we used another program for short time just to help her get up on some of those facts and repair some relationship things. And then we could go back into this and yeah, she's doing very well. It's, she's just going at her own pace and that's that's okay. That's the beauty of homeschooling is that I can meet my children right where they're at and I love that. So if you have any questions about how to do math, the large family, I don't know if I'm the one to ask, but um, if you're using Charlotte Mason Arith Elementary Arithmetic, then I can definitely help you there. I've done all of books one through four now. <laughs> um, all we have left is the recipe in book four. 
But um, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Let us go forth and serve the Lord and our families wholeheartedly.